Now live from the Cake Studios, this is Cake News on your side at 4. I think we've had had our share for a while. Yeah. Since I've been alive, like I've never seen this much rain in my life. It's a bad situation. After days of rain, flooding concerns span across Cakeland. Many wondering, is the worst over? The news starts now. Travel to and from Oklahoma is a lot harder this afternoon. This is why it's the Kansas Turnpike completely covered in water. Good afternoon. Thanks for joining us. I'm Greg Miller and I'm Krista Miller. This is Slate Creek just south of Wellington now and it's covering I 35. You can see the southbound lanes. This is causing major headaches for drivers this afternoon. You can see it's just covered in water. Look, a part of the road here is, is damaged from all of this. You've got emergency managers even further up uh, trying to assess the situation and divert people away if at all possible. And that's not the only trouble spot by any means today. We have live team coverage of these floods from our meteorologist Jay Prater. And we'll also go to one of the biggest trouble spots in the state right now, Sumner County. But we start with Cakes Taylor Adams. She joins us live from the Turnpike just south of Wellington. Taylor. Well, right now we're at the interchange at 160 and I 35. You can see behind me traffic is backing up as crews are here trying to get cars off of I 35. Traffic is moving very slowly throughout the area. The Kansas Turnpike Authority says I 35 is closed from South Haven to Wellington in both directions. You can't actually see any of that flooding causing the closures. That's because KDOT has I 35 closed about four miles from where any flooding is. The Kansas Turnpike Authority says again, I-35 close from Wellington to South Haven. Now here's aerial video from earlier this afternoon. You can see the highway is unpassable and completely covered in water. Crews are on scene trying to remove that excess water, but we are expecting more rain and the situation could worsen. If you're traveling and need a detour, Highway 81 is now back open. Highway 77 is also being used as an alternate route, but parts of this highway are now closed. KDOT says those areas are north of Walnut River to K-15. You're looking at video now sent to Cake TV just south of Winfield. As you enter town, you can see the line of vehicles trying to get through because of the detour. Highway 77 through Arc City is also majorly backed up. Police in Arc City are asking travelers to avoid the bypass on the north and south ends of town. Police say they don't have plans to close it at this time. Again, Highway I-35 is closed from South Haven to Wellington in both directions. Now, if you plan on using either one of those detours, Highway 77 or Highway 81, just expect major delays. Why south of Wellington? Taylor Adams, Cake News on your side. Taylor, thank you. That flooding caused traffic backups at the Wellington exit along the turnpike this morning. These pictures you're seeing now shared with us through the Cake First Alert weather app. So if that's what it was like trying to get into town, you can imagine what it's actually like in Wellington. Sumner County has already declared a state of disaster as it deals with the flooding from last night and now today. Cake's Pilar Pedraza continues our team coverage. Pilar. One of the bigger problems actually was Highway 81. It spent most of the day closed here right beside us because the Slate Creek, which is where I'm standing right now, was up and over. This actually shouldn't be any water, but it's up to my waist. This is the intersection of two roads right here, and the water is so high that I can't take another step back toward that sign, which is where I was originally going to do my live shot from. This is the same creek that's been causing all the problems throughout the city of Wellington today. We've had it happen before, but it's never gotten this bad. Not since we've been down here. Karen Clark's Wellington neighborhood is underwater. The homes just barely staying dry inside as nearby Slate Creek rose and fell throughout the night. It was busy. We kept watching the water rising just to make sure it's not going to come in the house. Others weren't as lucky. Across Sumner County, those same floodwaters filled basements, tore apart fencing, even tossed an air conditioner around. The county says the biggest problem has been getting around to all of the places with flood damage due to so many flooded out roads and highways. Union Pacific even had to repair railroad tracks along the creek. Clark says she's seen floods come and go, and while this one is worse than the others, she doesn't plan to let a little water chase her out of her home. <laughs> yeah, we've been here all this time, so I'm, you know, we just stay down here and just kind of watch. There's nowhere to go. I mean, all over town's pretty flooded. And 
In fact, there are others in town who spent today cleaning out their homes. The waters had receded enough that they could get in there and were pumping water out of basements, trying to get stuff dried out. We'll have that, their story new at 5, and we'll continue to keep an eye on the conditions here in Highway 81 because there is concern that with more rain coming, this water could rise again and go right back over that road. Live in Wellington, Pilar Pedraza, Cake News on your side. And that is the fear, and Pilar just mentioned it a moment ago. Homeowners in other parts of the state, too, are dealing with that water getting into their houses. We'll take you to Augusta, where they had around two feet of water in one family's home, especially in the utility room. Outside, the water filled their yard and got into the shed where they had to store lawn equipment. The water did not come in until the family was going to bed, but when they saw it, they immediately started getting everything together. Oh crap, let's get to the utility room and start getting the guns out of the safe and stuff, but uh, and protect her. She's in nursing school, so we wanted to protect her homework and computer and stuff because it has irreplaceable stuff on there. But uh, <clears throat> I mean, she got pretty upset at first, but you know, things are replaceable, people aren't. Coming up on Cake News at 5, our Austin Brazette tells us about an even scarier part of that evening in their home, how their young son was asleep as everything inside started to flood. And some water rescues were happening overnight in Marion County. In parts of Peabody, the water is so high, police have had to evacuate homes. In the southern part of town, police closed every north and south street because of high water. So far, there's no damage in town, but the police chief tells us he's worried because the water is still rising. If we get another round of storms that they're forecasting this afternoon, we're going to have more problems than we do now. They're seeing so much water because two nearby rivers are now backing up into town. The police chief reinforcing the warning to not drive through flooded water. But that's exactly what drivers did along Highway 50 near Florence. You see semis and cars pushing through it. On the east side of town, the Cottonwood River has flooded over and covered the bridge. There's a levee on the east side of town to protect from flooding like this. Some roads in Saline County are closed too. Take a look at what our crews got today. This is the Spring Creek flooding over Muir Road, just south of State Street. This area is two miles east of the Rolling Hills Zoo. Our crews say a few other streets are flooded in the area. Several roads are closed in many counties due to high waters, including in Kingman, McPherson, Rice, and Cowley counties. In Marion County, emergency managers in Strong City have evacuated some homes because of the flooding there. It's also shut down Highway 177 due to flooding near the Cottonwood River and closed several roads near Elmdale. All of this flooding comes after days of rain. I think when the heaviest came down last night, everybody who was awake at least it tensed up as we were oh, starting yeah. to see the early effects of this, and it just keeps getting worse. You go, here we go again. Yeah. And the question a lot of people want to know is, is it stopping? Let's bring in meteorologist Jay Prater, who's got his uh, pulse on this. And Jay, what does it look like today? We're going to get more rain. We're not going to have the rainfall totals that we had yesterday, but we're going to get more rain. I'm going to go back. Now, this is just over the past 36 hours. That's the window we're going to use. This is Doppler radar estimates. Got to take a little bit of a grain of salt. But look at the bullseye here. Douglas here in 77. That's almost a foot of rainfall in the past 36 hours. Even around Augusta, you're talking around nine inches of rain. Just a big bullseye. And you get down into Southern County, west of Belle Plaine, over eight inches estimated around Wellington, Whitman. Look at that, it's almost nine inches of rain. That's where we got all the flooding associated with the Kansas Turnpike and south of Utah. And this is to the east of US 77, over 10 inches of rain. And then another little bullseye. Get across central Kansas. You know, you go from, you get to Kingman County, back over to Pratt County, north of Isabel, over 8.5 inches. So the one thing we don't want to see, another almost seven and a half here in northern Kingman County near the Reno border, is more rainfall. Everything in green is under a flood watch. Look at the flood warnings. You know, the majority of the eastern half of Cake Land under flood warning. The smaller boxes indicate tributaries and rivers that are still above flood stage. Let's take you live to the edge. Here it is, the leading edge of rain and some thunderstorms. Fortunately, even though we might have an isolated severe thunderstorm warning, the risk of a lot of severe weather is much smaller thanks to all the rain we had last night. But even that line of showers continuing to Ellsworth, Lindsborg, so it continues to move. The good news is once you get back behind it, we're talking patchy, much lighter 
much lighter rain showers outside now. Yep, the clouds are starting to lower. Rain chances are picking up. We're at 65. Good news, thanks to the big ditch. This is as high as the Arkansas is going to get as it rolls through town. 65 at 5, 64 at 6, 63 at 7, and it will be raining. We'll talk more about when it ends coming up. Thanks, Jay. Stay ahead of the weather anytime by downloading the Cake First Alert weather app. It can track what's going on in your neighborhood. That app is very vital and it's also free for free, uh, free rather. Flooding is also causing problems in Houston, Texas this afternoon. 60 elementary students were stranded at school. Buses couldn't drop off and parents couldn't pick up. So teachers and administrators got creative to help keep the kids entertained. They turned their stay into a giant sleepover. We love our kids. That's just the bottom line. We care about them and um, we're proud of this district and what we do here and it's just emotional. Mm. They slept on cots donated by a local hospital and this morning families were able to pick up their kids. The school district is expected to open back up tomorrow. Other news this afternoon, a Wichita woman has been arrested for murder and other charges from Sunday's deadly crash in downtown Wichita. 24-year-old Mia Collins was booked into jail Tuesday for murder, aggravated battery, and other traffic charges. Police say Collins was driving a stolen SUV when she led police on a chase through downtown. She then crashed in two other vehicles at Douglas and Broadway, killing 12-year-old Rosemarie McElroy and her grandmother, 70-year-old Maria Wood. Local musician Jenny Wood also suffered critical injuries. A driver in another vehicle has been released from the hospital. A Wichita teenager is accused of being on drugs when police say she crashed into a van. Seven people with disabilities were hurt in this crash yesterday. The teenager was also arrested for running a stop sign and causing the van to roll. That crash happened near Central and West. A 23-year-old man in the teen's car had minor injuries and was also arrested on a warrant. A warning for you from police who say someone is posing as a law enforcement officer in north central Kansas. The Jewel County Sheriff's Office has received a report of a man impersonating a Kansas Highway Patrol officer. The man is in his 30s and drives a four-door white Chevy Impala with a spotlight on it. Deputies say this is your advice. If you think someone is not a law enforcement officer and they try to stop you, call 911 to report it right away. People in New York needing a ride are going around asking, give me a lift? And why they're struggling to find a ride. Plus, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex debuted their brand new bundle of joy. We'll meet him coming up. And next, a long-standing tradition in Wichita happens again this weekend. Why they're closing the book, though, after 60 years. This is King News at 4 with Krista Miller, Greg Miller, and meteorologist Jay Prater with your Cape First Alert forecast. Cape News on your side. Okay, let's go ahead and start with the edge. And unfortunately, we have more rain rolling over where we have the flooding in progress. If there's some good news, we really flipped the atmosphere yesterday with all that rainfall and all the storms. So the risk of a severe thunderstorm isn't zero, but it's smaller than what we were anticipating yesterday. And the tornado threat is incredibly low. The leading edge of the showers are starting to get some light rain in the city. With the heavier rain, you can kind of see it starting to roll on in with the thunderstorms back behind there in southern Kingman County. Maybe a little small hail too. Hutch. Sterling, East Alliance, some of these showers and thunderstorms, maybe a little small hail. Then you just get into the lighter showers across southwest and even northwest Kansas. A little light to maybe occasional moderate rain from Colby up through Hoxie, north of Hill City. And showers, notice how they're weakening from Osborne to Beloit, Mankato, and across parts of Jewell County. So we're going to add more rain, not as much as what we had last night. Got the drops on the camber now here at West and 13th. We're at 62 degrees. The winds are out of the south at 5 miles per hour. Garden City, there's still maybe a light passing shower, but the heavy rain you're done with. 53 degrees, but the winds are gusting to 25 miles per hour. Haze, 55 degrees. The winds out of the north. And our final stop, here we are in Goodland. Again, cloudy day. And it's 44 degrees with the winds gusting to 37 miles per hour. That's awfully chilly. So you got 40s, you transition into the 50s, then you get into the 60s and as warm as 72 in Chinook and 73 in Topeka. Frontal boundary finally getting a nudge and getting pushed out of the state. Not only is the air going to be cooler, but it will be drier. So we finally get to shut the door on the severe threat once the front comes through. Winds out of the south, Wichita and El Dorado. We're on the warm side. Front 
and then you get the hutch on the other side. The winds are out of the northwest. Yeah, winds are kicking up a little bit across parts of western Kansas, and here we are over the past six hours. There's the rain moving in. I'll kind of back the view out. The next round of severe weather, southern Arkansas down into Texas, but the system is going to lift out. But notice back here, see it's trying to squeeze up a few showers. Another little weak little wave comes in to bring a little bit of rain across western Kansas tomorrow. So by 5 o'clock, that front should be along and through Wichita. The showers and storms are along and behind it. Some heavy rainfall that could make the flooding worse. Could see an isolated severe storm, but the good news is once we get past midnight, that gets out of Cake Land. But the clouds are in no hurry to leave, and that next little wave comes into western Kansas, tries to squeeze out a few showers, and yes, it's cool enough where it mixes in possibly with a few flakes across northwest Kansas. I said a few flakes. And then tomorrow late, hopefully we'll start breaking up that cloud cover. The forecast for the next seven days, a lot of cloud cover. Maybe a little isolated shower, but a much smaller chance. We're not talking flooding rain here. Friday, small chance of a shower up to 62. Friday night is a better chance. Saturday, some sunshine, small shower chance, mid 60s. We get more sun and we start warming things up. We'll get into the upper 70s Monday, Tuesday, and we'll see what gets into next week. Now, across north central Kansas, still hanging on some cloud cover tomorrow. Maybe a little passing lighter shower. Friday, a little more sunshine at 60s. Small chance of showers into Friday night. The weekend, we get increasing sunshine and we do warm into the upper 70s for southwest Kansas that you know cloudy chance tomorrow with a 20% chance of a little shower Friday 30% with some sunshine mixed smaller shower chances the sunshine comes back to finish out the weekend get into next week and warm in the 70s and tomorrow we will warm to 48 and there could be a little passing shower too around Colby and then close to freezing tomorrow night. We're talking mid 50s and then sunshine and 70s starting on Sunday. Uh, I hate that we have more rain on the way. Yeah. The good news is we're not looking at the absolutely once approximately every 200 year inter interval deluge that we had wow. the past 24 hours. Yeah. Well, still, I mean, we just we, we need the break. We have to have the break. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Thanks, Jay. Coming up, the battle between Congress and the White House is heating up. The latest coming up. And next, the Art and Book Fair returns this weekend. Why some are calling it a bittersweet one this year. It's a bittersweet weekend for the Friends of the Art Museum. The 60th anniversary of the Art and Book Fair is this weekend. But it's also the last one. And here to explain is Jill Miller with the organization. Jill, thanks for your time. Thanks. This has got to be a, a tough weekend ahead. I definitely think we'll be fielding lots of questions mm -hmm. about why we're doing this. And it will be sad because it is the last one. But it's also a celebration of 60 years. Oh, right. 60 years is a long time to do anything. It really is, and it's been a good run, too. It has. So we were talking during the break. You can't say what's coming next, but it's not as though you guys are stopping projects or, or big events altogether. No. So what can we expect as we look at the last one coming up? Well, what we, we have a lot of great entertainment coming up. We have Randy Rathbun and the Ukulele Society and Atomic, uh, Tribe Atomic Belly Dance and all kinds of fun things like that as far as entertainment goes. We have lots and lots of gently used books uh, that we sell. We have a lot of, we get a lot of people that donate art books and beautiful books like that because we're the, our, at the art museum. Sure. So we have a little special little special sections and collectibles and that kind of thing too. So we're doing that. We have 47 artists from 14 states around the United States coming to show their work. They're gonna be on the grounds. And then we have food trucks and the big lemon and um, just, oh, we have, um, Linneber and Miller is one of my favorite things that we do at the Art and Book Fair, and they set up an art photography booth, and they dress people in whatever costume of whatever period they're doing, and take a photo that you get um, that you get when you finish your your session with them. And because we have the Georgia O'Keeffe exhibit up right now, it's all going to be florals. And I've been looking at the stuff they've been working on for the costuming; it's absolutely amazing. Wow, there's so it's a lot of fun. There's so much that goes into this. I mean, and it's got to just be a labor of love for, for you guys. It is. There are about 40 people on the board, and this is all volunteer. Wow. Oh, we're looking at the pictures from the past. You know, 60 years brings back a lot of memories. What's your favorite? My favorite year? Memory. 
My favorite memory? Um, you know, my favorite thing is watching all the mothers come with their children. Mm -hmm. It's become such a traditional Mother's Day event that uh, that's the fun part to me, to see all the moms and their kids come. And a lot of kids will pick out gifts in the art fair for their mothers. So that's always really fun. That is such, it's such a neat event. Um, I know we're just excited for the weekend and hopefully uh, to get out and about and kind of celebrate some hopefully better weather. Um, run through the hours for us, if you would, this weekend. Saturday, it's from 10 until 5, and Sunday from 11 to 5. Okay. All right, sounds good. Well, best of luck this weekend, all Thank right? You. Thank you so much for your time, Jill. Good to see you. Thank you. Coming up, Mother's Day is just a few days away, and Kraft wants to make sure you have no excuses to take mom out for a dinner or brunch. How they plan to help. Plus, we're getting a first look today at the newest royal edition. We meet baby Sussex next. Well, the world gets its first glimpse at the newest British royal. And they did it in style. Proud parents Prince Harry and Duchess Meghan introduced their firstborn son to the public. Interesting to note here, a lot of people have been talking about how Prince Harry was the one to hold his son when they introduced him to the public. His name is Archie Harrison Mountbatten Windsor. And the big announcement came on Instagram with this family photo of the moment Meghan and Harry introduced him to the Queen and Prince Philip with Meghan's mom Doria watching. Royal watchers are already saying Archie looks just like his mom. Magic, it's pretty amazing. And I mean, I have the two best guys in the world. Archie is Queen Elizabeth's eight great-grandchild. He will not have a title and will not be a His Royal Highness. So a lot of interesting things to note from that announcement. I know everybody always kind of digs through it and speculates on what does this mean? What does that mean? He has some he has some glowing parents so <laughs> yes, they're so happy. It's Very such a proud. beautiful family picture already. All right you were talking about some just incredible amounts of rainfall in the last couple of days. Yeah, you know, we started the show after all the flooding. We were talking mm -hmm. about the past 36 hours yeah. and how intense that was. Well, now let's go back to Sunday. And we're going to talk about some of the radar estimates. This is since Sunday, and you'll just notice how central Kansas into south central Kansas, some just incredible rain totals. So let's go back into south central Kansas. Near Oxford, just to the west, I mean, that's, you know, 14, 15 inches of rain. Again, these are radar estimates here, but even around Douglas and US 77, 14 inches of rain. Plus. That's a big swath. And then you get into central Kansas. Part of this was a storm that just stayed and didn't move on Monday. This is the one that uh, Tony Loback was able to get that tornado on. But look at that, over a foot of rainfall. More Cake News at 4 coming up.